Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. I'm Chief Sweet and today I'm going to be showing you how I made a bioactive leopard gecko tank and it's a, going to be a complete setup guide from lights to the soil. Let's get into it, shall we? So the enclosure I'm going to be using for my leopard gecko is an Exoterra 36 by 18 by 18 inch enclosure. And the reason I chose this one over the Zoomed is because Exoterra the, on the on this 40 gallon enclosure, the substrate is so much thicker. Like I was able to put six inch, inches of substrate and that's what I wanted. I wanted to allow, if my leopard gecko wanted to burrow and dig, I wanted to allow that. I wanted very deep substrate. Not only that, I wanted substrate to go like get moist on the bottom, kind of keep that moisture in. So the way succulents kind of always have have something but it's still a dry it's a perfect mixture also for this I did not use any drainage layers at all no drainage layers and I'll have everything you can buy for this linked down in the description now there's some things you can't buy like I used um, some cork bark uh, from Pangea just a bulk box I just got a bunch it's not gonna be exact and I used some different wood I didn't use like the um, grapevine sandblasted grapevine I used just oak wood from outside I chopped it up made sure it was safe put it in there but the plants you could buy from the bio dude you can also just go to lowe's or home depot to get these plants as well so let's get into the setup shall we so as i mentioned earlier i am using the exoterra 40 gallon or 50 gallon because i always hear two descriptions of how many gallons the 36 by 18 by 18 inch enclosure is but it is 36 by 18 by 18 inches so it's 40 or 50 one of the two but i'm using that one now, one thing that does suck about the Exoterra tank is it comes with a magnificent background. The background looks amazing, but the background has these cavities where cords go inside of the tank. And this always allows like isopods or feeder insects to go back there and just hide. And most of the time they can't escape and they die. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the back cavities with spray foam. Now, most people use great stuff, but I really like Loctite spray foam. It has very tiny air bubbles and the great stuff has giant air bubbles, which just kind of throw stuff off. So I'm gonna use this Loctite spray foam. It's become one of my favorite spray foams to use for builds like this. So there was no method to this. I just sprayed the foam into the cavities. So that way no isopods and insects can get back there. And this really just saves me from having to pull the background out, cleaning it out and doing that over and over again. I let the foam sit overnight and then the next day I use the razor knife and just cut the edges off. To make sure the background stays attached firmly to the tank, I put some poster command strips along the four corners of the back and then I apply the background to the tank. Now it's time to make the substrate. The first part of the mix is some peat moss I got from Home Depot. I add this in a mix bin, it's really just a storage container also from Home Depot. I add about a gallon of water to rehydrate the soil because it's very dry straight out of the bag. After that, I got some play sand from Home Depot as well and then started adding in lots of the sand. I mix it up and I keep on adding sand until I get the consistency I like, which is very sandy, but not too sandy. It's hard to describe it, but really I just eyeballed it until I liked the way it looked and felt, and it just felt like really good soil. That's gonna just be very humid in case my leopard gecko digs down in there, and that's the best way I can really describe it. When I was done getting the mix perfect, I went ahead and added it into the Exoterra tank. I added it about almost halfway up to the lip of the enclosure. After that, I am gonna be adding a top layer of substrate. This substrate is actually Exoterra Stone Desert mixed with some clay that I got down by my creek around my house. So it makes for a very nice clay stone desert look, which is actually what the leopard gecko's natural habitat looks like, and that's what I'm going for. Obviously, I can't get natural plants from the region or anything like that, but I'm gonna do my best. For the branches of the enclosure, I just went outside and cut some branches off an oak tree. I cut a few branches and this is really what took me a while because I didn't know what branches would fit the vibe that I'm going for. So this part really took a long time because I was adding branches, taking them out, putting branches back in, and then finally I settled on this arrangement for the branches in the enclosure. And if you can tell in the background, I did add a hide that's made of cork bark. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add a bunch of rocks and I'm gonna arrange them so that way they work as another hide. That way I can have a hide that's gonna be hot and then a cool hide as well. I finished the rock hide and added two pieces of cork bark in the middle to act as yet another hide. This hide, I hope to have moderate heat, not too hot, but not too cold, just right in the middle. Now it's time to add the plants. For plants, I started with regular succulents like jade plants. 
Now I do plan to add more plants later, but for now I just wanted to keep it simple and see how it goes. I added these succulents throughout the enclosure and I can't wait to see how they grow in. For the lighting, I'm gonna use a daylight LED 6500K shop light to help with the growth of the plants. For my Leopard Gecko Charmander's lighting, I went with the Arcadia Shade Dweller and a Halogen 75 watt heat lamp. Now for the cleanup crew, I went with regular isopods and springtails for this. As you can see, there's an isopod running around. But what's very important about this is you need the rocks for an arid environment like this. Rock, they will hide underneath the rocks, under the food bowl. In arid environments, you really need rocks and like places that it's cool. And if you put a lot of rocks and stack them up, there will be little crevices that is not as hot as it is outside in the air temperature of the tank when you need like high heat of like 90s and stuff like that. Your isopods pods and springtails will find those little crevices inside and do exceptionally well, especially with deep substrate where it's moist underneath the top layer of substrate like the rock layer I added in this. I am now finished and I can add my baby Charmander into the cage and let her explore her new home. I let her settle in a week before I filmed again and I was very pleased with how Charmander reacted to her new home. So far, she really likes the middle hide and spends most of her time there. All the plants are doing great and haven't started getting wilty, letting me know that they have taken root and will do well for their foreseeable future. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.